Hello, this is Mrs. Butcher, and this is a video on quadratic inequalities. We're going to start by talking about graphing them, and we can have our graphs in four different um, setups here. We could have y is less than ax squared plus bx plus c. That's just a standard quadratic. We could have y is greater than, y is less than or equal to, or y is greater than or equal to. So when you graph these, you're going to graph them exactly like you would if that was an equal sign, only if it is a less than or a greater than without a line under it, then we're going to graph it with a dotted line, dotted, dashed, whatever. If it has the equals on the bottom of it, then we will go ahead and graph it with a solid line. And then after we've graphed it, if it is a less than, or a less than or equal to, we're going to shade below the parabola. And if it is a greater than or greater than or equal to, we're going to shade up above the parabola. So for our first example, we're going to graph y is greater than or equal to 5x squared plus 10x plus 7. Now I have greater than or equal to, so that tells me I'm going to use a solid line. And greater than means I'm going to shade up. So now, as a review of graphing quadratics, in standard form, we want to find the axis of symmetry at x equals negative b over 2a, so negative 10 divided by 2 times 5, which is negative 1. You don't have to dash it on there, but it helps. There's your axis of symmetry. We need to find the vertex, so we're going to plug in a negative 1. 5 times negative 1 squared is 5. Plus 10 times negative 1 is minus 10. 5 minus 10 plus 7 is going to give us 2. So our vertex is at negative 1 and positive 2. And I'm actually going to um, adjust my scale on this. I'm going to count these by 4s because I know I've got a stretch of 5, and that's going to make it really tall and skinny. Remember, a vertical stretch makes it narrower. So we will plot at negative 1, 2. And then we can figure out that the y-intercept is 7. So right there. And mirror it across. And since we need one more point, if we plugged in a positive 1, we would get 5 plus 10 plus 7, which is 22. So 20, 24 we'd need to go up to here and mirror across. Now we're going to use a solid line. And we're going to shade up. And a lot of people have a hard time with shading these, these parabolas. What you're going to do is put your pencil on the vertex and then just draw an up arrow. And that is inside our parabola, so that tells us that we're shading everything inside the parabola. See, for example, if our parabola was facing down and we were to shade up, then we would be shading everything outside, wouldn't we? So the inside-outside thing doesn't have to do with the greater than or less than because it depends on which way the uh, parabola is facing. So just look at your vertex and go up or down from there, and that'll give you the perfect idea of where to shade. Okay, here's another example. This time we're going to graph y is less than 3x squared minus 18x plus 2. So we have a less than, not equal to. That means we're going to use a dashed line and we're going to shade down. Okay, so I've set up our grid for us to graph this. Remember, we need to find the uh, axis of symmetry. So negative b would be positive 18 divided by 2a, 2 times 3. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So our axis of symmetry is through here. And then if we plug in a 3, we get 3 times 3 squared is 27, minus 18 times 3, which is 54, plus 2, which gives us negative 25. So that's why I'm counting these by 4s, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. So negative 25 is going to be right there. We know the y-intercept is positive 2, so if that's 4, that would be 2, and we'd need to mirror it across. And then we just really need two more points inside here, so if we were to plug in a 2, we'd have 
3 times 2 squared is 3 times 4, which is 12, minus 18 times 2, minus 36, plus 2. 12 minus 36 is negative 24, plus 2 would be negative 22. Um, it's about right here. And then we can mirror it across. And so that gives us our minimum of five points to sketch our curve. Only what did I just do wrong? We said we were going to do this with a dash line, and I have no undo. So when you have no undo and you forget, you can erase parts of your line, see? Or you can write me a note. This is supposed to be a dashed line, nice and big so I can see it. And then we're supposed to shade down. So down from here means we're going on the outside. So everything on the outside of this parabola is going to be shaded. You don't have to go so far out, but everything on the outside. And that's it. All right, so that was graphing. Now we're going to do solving quadratic inequalities. Um, and I'm going to explain this um, with an example. So. We want to solve the inequality x squared plus 2x plus 1 is greater than 9. So when you're graphing an inequality, you're just drawing it and shading. When we're solving, we're actually going to figure out what x values make this statement true. So the first thing that I want you to do is to rewrite it. You know how when we're solving quadratics, we always want to set it equal to 0? Well, let's do the same thing with the inequalities. So step one, we're going to rewrite this equation with 0 on one side. We're going to have x squared plus 2x. And then if I subtract 9, I get minus 8 is greater than 0. After you've done that, we're going to solve the related quadratic. So if this were equal to 0, you would solve it. You can use whatever method you have. Um, you could use factoring or quadratic formula or you could use completing the square, whatever you like best. This one happens to factor nice and pretty, so we have x plus 4 and x minus 2, giving us zeros of x equals negative 4 and positive 2. The next thing we're going to do is sketch a number line, which is going to represent our x-axis, and I want you to mark the zeros on it. And then you look at your original quadratic and you can determine which way it opens. So you just sketch a parabola like that through its intercepts. It doesn't have to be plotted nicely or anything, you're just sketching it. So I'm going to switch the page and we'll do, we'll do that in a sec. There you go. So a number line with the x-intercepts negative 4 and 2. And then I know this parabola opens up, so I just sketched a random opening up parabola through negative 4 and 2. It doesn't matter if it's to scale. It doesn't matter at all. We just want to know which way is it facing, so that we can then do step four. All right, so now we're going to highlight the part of the parabola that corresponds to our inequality. Our original inequality said less, or I'm sorry, greater than zero. Greater than zero, remember this is your y. Where is your y value greater than zero? Is up here and up here. So we want to know what x's make our y's positive. So you then you highlight the corresponding x values, which you just all you have to do is take it down, right? These are our x values that give us a positive, the positive part of the parabola. So then when you answer the question, um, we could say x is less than negative 4 or x is greater than 2. Um, you could also put it in um, interval notation. I actually like that better. Negative infinity to negative 4, soft bracket, and 2 to infinity, soft bracket. So either way that you put it, it's fine. Inequality or interval. And that is it. So you guys have a good time. Talk to you later. Bye.